Okay. Um, this is going to be about arcade uh, restoration and restore. As you can see, this is the law is destined for the trash heap. A buddy of mine says, you want it? I said, you know what? I think I can do something with it. Most people would set it outside, get in the rain, swell up, and then kick it apart. Make scrap food out of it. Wow, you see with this one? Oh, yeah, this is what's in this one. One box. Put some wiring harness in here. Uh, there's a couple parts in the back here. So basically, it's a gutted cabinet. Somebody said it's not working. I'm going to take the monitor out. Once they take the monitor out, they take the boards out. And when they leave it there is the transformer and maybe the old power supply board. So basically, you have an empty shell. The question is, is this worth saving? Now, in my opinion, looking at this cabinet, yeah, it's got some potential to it. Sides are gummed up or anything, and we put their name in it, initials. Uh, our key will need to be replaced on it. Look at the top. Is the water been dripping on it? You know, and also you're looking around your team here. You know, you got any swelling. Your Galagas were 90% part of the board. Where your Miss Pac Man's and Pac Man plywood. So, I don't know why they went with that, but in my opinion, bad design. I mean, where would you where would you find most of these all the time? Laundromat, convenience store. You know, people coming in and out with the weather. A lot of the uh, machines I've been getting, they've got kind of a soapy smell to them. What's that tell you? Laundromat, overflow. And where did that go? Right in the box. So basically, what I do is when I look at a cabinet, I first assess the damage to see uh, what I'm going to need to do with it. Is it even worth saving? Uh, you just put it on its back, see if it's got the feet under there, the leveler. Um, and the other part is usually your back door is missing. Because usually on these machines here, your back door was also part of it. Corners, um, they lost the locks, so they did. They bust the door out. They want to get the parts out. Same thing with the front. So basically, what you can do with this cabin here is I've got some uh, Miss Pac Man and Pac Man stencils. Um, so basically, you can make a brand new front. And how you do that. Good way to do that is you can do some wood dials. <clears throat> some wood dials and some good old-fashioned hook glue. Verbal mallet, that on the side. Uh, make yourself a, a template so that you can match the holes up on the side. What they did when they built the cabinet is they use these crappy uh, penny nails. And you know as well as I do when they get when they get rusty. Also in particle board what they do. Cardboard swallows, pops apart. So that's a real easy that's step one you can do. Or you can also make braces inside. So you can cut these about an inch. And you can also use these nice little wood screws. Make, make a nice bracket. See they've already did it here, but they use the pinning nail and some wood. Well you can redo it again by making your own brackets in it. Do some wood glue, do some uh, wood nails here. So basically, I'm going to show you the crap that I've been dealing with for the past year. Okay, here is your typical Batman. Probably out of the laundry magazine room and stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about this machine off the bat? Probably dead, right? That wonderful big silver lock bar on the front mm -hmm. that you want that in your game room, right? Yeah. Side on there where 
millions of kids put their hands under this breast milk, you know, peeking over the side. Um, you zip on the top, you'll have the uh, tax stickers on there. And on the bottom, you'll usually have uh, water damage. And just like this cabinet here, both of these, no back door. More detail of years of touch me, Miss Pac Man. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, this is a real good one here. I evaluated this one and I thought, mm -hmm. we're just going to kick the bottom out of this one. Now, the bottom on Miss Pac Man's are um, particle board. It's like, why would you put particle board on the bottom of an arcade machine? here at part of the bottom. The only reason I can figure it out, I haven't found a true answer yet, but part of the board can swell up, it gets wet, but it still to a degree retains its integrity. You've got your heavy parts on the bottom. If you would put plywood down there, what would it do? It would start to bow and crack and you know I've had I've, I've got a machine one time where the bottom was actually plywood and it split right in half. So you can kind of foresee why they did that, but over the years, I guess they didn't see it would be in a laundromat, getting you know, from the washing machine. So good and bad on that. So basically here you have to evaluate, you know, okay, I can't save anything on the bottom of this one. This not gonna do it. So I would take the parts off the bottom, the levelers, save those for later. Some are just so rusted you can't do that, go replace those. So now I'm looking at what's good on the machine. Nothing on the back, on the bottom there, good. But also I'm looking at on the sides. Because your Miss Pac Man's on the side cabinet front and the bottom back, where a Galaga is particle board, is dual plywood. Which means they've taken two pieces of plywood and wedged them together. Which makes them extra. The only problem with that is you get separation, but they also put laminate on top of it. So this is what this Pac-Man looks like after I take all the valuable parts out of it. This is what happens to your Pac-Man. This is your laminate, and basically. They don't take the best plywood, so I'll have knots in them, some have holes in them. And after I get done sanding them, I'll find out where the soft spots are at. And also where they have glued the laminate together, you'll get like a line. Now, you don't see it because they do a good job of putting sealant on there and two coats of paint. But unfortunately, the glue start, after 30 years, the glue just does not adhere anymore. And you get to a certain point where the glue is still adhesive, so you may get peeling like an onion. So basically, I've got to try to figure out: Do I need to relaminate the whole front, or can I take part of it? And that's basically what your Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man's happen: is you get about an inch to two inches on the bottom where it just starts to peel up. So this is the process here where I am basically stripping down the cabinet to assess the rest of the damage. Um, another thing I'll do is when I get a cabinet is I'll take the tea molding off. Because nine times out of ten, tip gouges, it's, it just <clears throat> it's worn, it's not shiny like here on the edges or, you know, kids just put their hands over yours. And that's going to be another good assessment of what is going on with the cabinet. Because what you don't know a lot of times is there's little things that crawl in the machines. And guess what? You take the tea molding off. That's where you're going to see where they're at. You're going to see the little tunnels, the little holes, and this used to be their house. Now the thing is, is, you don't know. Are they still in there? You don't want to know that, do you? So usually if you get a cabinet that has a little, little, little colony of holes there, you might want to get rid of it. Even though it's like, gee, it's a nice cabinet, but do you really want to affect the rest of your cabinets? Okay, so that's... That's the other bad thing that unfortunately happens to some cabinets that we just have to get rid of them. 
and there's the bottom of that machine again. And you notice the, um, the main board is still in there. And I've tucked the transformer up onto the side so that I can actually get in there and start doing some work. Assessing the damage. Make a new back door. I've got templates for this Pac-Man and Pac-Man. So this machine is this Pac-Man. I'm the same template. And I use a uh, particle board, just like this piece here, to drill out the holes in the back. And everybody sees little girls on the back, the vent, the vent girls? This is something you can buy at Home Depot. Any idea what this is? Right, it's, a gutter, it's a gutter cutter. Mm -hmm. You can buy it, it comes about this tall, and it's about three bucks. Guess what you do? There are wire cutters, the staple gun, there you go. Can't tell the difference. So, a lot of what I'm working here is with wood. I mean, right here. You got a couple metal parts here, your brackets, you take those off here. Uh, take out, you got the components in there. Take this off, take your monitor, your, your bezel brackets off. See what you got in there. Um, usually you'll have some damage in here. Some kids put their names in here or we'll just get more. Um, so basically what I'm using to get this cabinet down to bare wood is this wonderful little toy. Nice rotary sander. And I start with a pretty heavy course because with Pac-Man, actually this Pac-Man's the worst. Pac-Man's pretty even. 40 grit. He'll take it down. But you got to be careful because if you go too far, what are you going to get into? You're going to get the skin of the machine. You're not going to get into the muscle. Or you're going to get into the skin. So you kind of have to be careful. So we'll use a 40 grit on the sander, and also wear one of these because we all know. This is Miss Pac-Man, and this is Pac-Man. And where's this going to go? Up your nose and in your lungs. And I think we remember that back way in the 80s, a lot of paint had lead in it, didn't it? So you don't want to be getting that up your nose and in your lungs, because we see Mr. Doctor when you're 65 and can't breathe. So this one is good for, this one's good here for, like, fine particle dust. I do have it. The better one, it's a little heavier. It's like Darth Vader out there. I mean, you can't breathe and you're sweating yet. But this is good for particle dust and also for paint. <coughs> you know, and the cartridges can be laced with these. Uh, they're reusable, but they last about a week. They start getting funky and you maybe start smelling all breath on and stuff like that. This one you can wash out. So take a couple precautions there. Uh, safety glasses. I don't get the dust in your eyes. Finishing up this cabinet here, and basically, you've got a pretty good machine underneath. I mean, it looked like junk when you first got it, but in reality, if you take all the paint off of it, you can start. You can go from this to a nice wooden cabinet, and now you can really assess what you got to do with it. Uh, do I got bottom damage on it? Do I got the laminate start to come off on the sides? I mean, there'll be times I'll be working and I'll get a hole and I'll purse on it and then it comes up and the hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like, oh, there's a big lot in there. So I gotta go back and fix that. So basically, uh, sand that now, finishing that one up. And that's what they look like uh, after I get them fixed up. I do use this here. This is a good product, uh, Elmer's makes it. They had a, a wood filler. Um, this is designed if, just for a little, uh, a lot of the cabinets, they use the penny nails. Well, guess what? They put the penny nails in and then they filled it in. Well, after, over the years, those nails have shifted and stuff and you'll get little holes in the cabinet, right in the laminate, you'll see it. You ever sand one down? That's what happens. Um, also, this is another great product here. What do you use an auto bobber for? Guess what? This is your best friend for a water damage cabinet. Well, uh, you can only work with that in about five minute increments, so you don't make up a big 
thing because that's what you have the big hard wall with Bondo. So, um, Good example. Pretty good shape. Uh, unfortunately, on the Miss Pac-Man, Pac uh, the side gets uh, kind of wet and rotted. Now, what I said is these are part of the board. The Miss Pac-Man, the Pac-Mans are double plywood. Go in to fix it instead of saying, "Well, I got to replace," you know, all side of that machine. No. Basically, you go up about an inch above where the water damage is. Now since it's two pieces of plywood, you just cut your, you get your saw level to where it takes the outer one off. Because you, the inner one is protected. The outer protects the inner one. The inner one also has a piece of laminate on it too. So you take that one piece off, draw a line straight across, get a chisel, take that outer layer off. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. Basically, it's almost like doing auto body work on these machines. There we go. That's uh, basically what I do is I take a piece of plywood, cut that down. That one was up about nine inches from the bottom. I'm like, gee, what am I going to do with this? It's just it's just pulling away. The laminate is gone, and it's already into the wood. So I cut a piece of plywood. Get it straight with the other side. Glue all on that, you know, flip it on its side. Put glue on there, screws. There's one of the little bit of screws. Boom, boom, boom. Put screws all through there instead of using a clamp. Okay, let it dry for a day or two. Then you go back and take those screws out. And then get this here with filler. It's like all the little holes up. And guess what? It will stay nice and pressed. And whenever you pick that machine up, you won't get any separation of the wood. Okay. So basically, that's how you kind of save a save an arcade machine. Uh, this one here, sides are in good shape. Inside is real solid. I said I would take the metal brackets out of here, take this off, and replace this piece of uh, plexiglass up here. Uh, you got the inside of that because it just is messed up. Now if you tip this back. What do we notice here? Basically, the bottom is separate from the side of the cabinet. So, more than likely, with this one, since it's already chipping away here and you know, deteriorating, kick the bottom of the cabinet out. Just rebuild it. Put yourself a nice, fresh piece of particle board in there. Put your braces in the bottom all the way around. Put some more glue in here. And what you can do is uh, get yourself some, uh, I mean, all the, all the external parts, coin door, everything, you can pretty much find that online. You can find parts here at the show, uh, swap mates or whatever. Those parts are still available. Uh, now, some of the other parts you're going to do, uh, like for your coin door. I don't have a coin door here, but basically you put your coin door on here, you take those pieces off, you take your brackets off here. I use a rotary wire brush. Get all the rust off of them, get them real smooth, and then you can use another, uh, use a rotary sander, two twenty, real fine. You can smooth out any where, where there were some rusted pieces on there, and you use a wire brush. And now you got a little bit of uh, rise in the paint. Use this once you do that. Here's a real good product, Prilon makes it dual, it has paint and primer. So instead of putting my primer on there, let it dry and then put paint on there. 
Crown makes this, and it's, it's like five bucks a can. But I'm telling you what, makes these look real nice. Also, your control panel. You know, rip the, you know, you have the, the CPO on there, the overlay. Rip that off. Use some, uh, use some goof off uh, scraper. Also, the wire brush sander on there. Get that nice and clean. Um, sometimes on the control panels, they got some uh, dings in there. You know, use a little bit of the bondo. Don't, don't, don't do a good job on there. Because um, I'll be honest with you, the control panels are pretty durable, pretty solid piece of metal, but they're also kind of expensive to replace. Uh, the Pac-Man uh, the Pac ones actually have a wooden base up underneath of it. So you kind of want, uh, those are kind of hard to uh, repair. Uh, now, for, now, once you get your machine sanded, it's kind of exposed. That's 30 years it's been covered up. Now suddenly you just rip all the, the, the makeup off of it. It's like, okay, it's exposed to the air. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to be like a dried onion. It's going to start to peel. So you've got to make sure that every little forward hole on there has to be filled. So just take a Q-tip, some glue, start dabbing it. And then you go back with your 220. And the cabinet, get all that. And what that glue does is it just basically fills in the pores. But you still have to go one step further. You need to put some kind of seal on the counter. Good product on there, and it's a good way to get a base canvas for your, your whatever machine you're gonna do. It's killed. Don't put it on a dilute it a little bit for your sprayer, but uh, put a nice coat on there, and suddenly you're, you've got a white cabinet. White pack neck cabinet. Now what that kilts does is suddenly, you know, do you ever wonder why the paint is black? Well, I could tell us. Because black hides up the defects. Well, you wouldn't want a white pack neck cabinet, would you? Because suddenly you'd be able to see Marsh's name really bold on the side of the machine. So there's a good there's a good example of why you need to put a clear uh, uh, a seal one on there is because you can assess the damage. You know, you go up and see, hey, I got some, uh, I've got some laminate that's not smooth right there, or uh, I've got a gouge right there I need to fill in. Um, also, basically, you're sealing that cabinet from the environment again. Because you know, once you start, because uh, the, the next step, when you start laminating it, is you're going to start putting paint on there, wet paint back on a 30-year-old cabinet. So you want something between that dry wood and that wet paint. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is that laminate is going to suck up that paint. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to Because it's going to get all that moisture that's in that paint. So basically, that, that kilts is going to solidify that cabinet. Now with the Pac-Man cabinet, I will, Pac-Man is Pac-Man cabinet, I'll put one coat, yellow is Pac-Man blue, okay? Now if we're doing that, and everybody knows when they paint their house, I use Home Depot Glid and Paint and spray. Not watered down, and the only difference between this Pac-Man and Pac-Man, pink and red. Don't think about that, did you? There's only two different colors. One is blue, one is yellow. This one, Pac-Man is yellow. And the thing is, is when I first started doing this for the for the Pac-Man Miss Pac-Mans, is the colors were wrong on Apollo. Somebody went on there and researched the colors. Best way I found to get the, the matching colors is when you start taking apart the cabinet. You can also see how they painted the cabinet too. But good indications of where your colors are at. On the front here, where you have your Texas your 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 tax stickers. Pull those off, guess what? There's that nice brick paint there. 
Also, the kick plate. I don't put kick plates back on my machines. Because I think it looks better. The, uh, the artwork pops out more. You don't get that big black bar down at the bottom. And it's not going, the machine's not going with the Kmart or the local 7 Eleven or whatever. So you want it nice and pretty. Well, guess what? When you pull that black kick plate underneath there, there's all that color. Also, on the back, too. Pull the handles in on the back, take those off, guess what? That color's standing there too. And what it is, is over the years, 30 years of them sitting in a convenience I store window, is faded to this Pac Man. And what happens? Start sanding these cabinets on you gotta get those off. A goof off on a nice scraper. Don't dig too hard though. But um, that's a good way you can get the colors on there. Uh, let's see. When you're going to paint with the Glidden type paint, you need to make sure that you use one of these little If you get a four pack, add on these ones for about 90 cents. And uh, for your power sprayer, you just pour the paint in there and it gets all the little dry pieces of paint on there. Because when you go to paint on a smooth cabinet here, you're going to get little dimples. And basically it is just dry pieces of paint that go through the painting. And plus it clogs up the paint gun. So this one here is a lifesaver, a lot of, uh, takes a lot of work out of your job. Now I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect, but that's where, after you paint your first couple coats, you're going to get your cabinet all wet. Wait, but we're not supposed to get cabinets wet. You just heard from the last demonstration. What happens so nice? Well, well, guess what? If you put two coats of paint on these machines, they're going to be pretty much waterproof for a while. So what you do is you flip the cabinet on its side, get yourself a bucket of water, and you've got this 600 gray waterproof, waterproof sandpaper. <coughs> now make sure the cabinet, uh, I use like a little hand spray, you know, for your hair. I did when I do a certain area. And you just basically you're standing down, you're like, oh my God, I just put brand new paint on there. Why am I sanding it down? This is so fine with water that it will take any of those little defects off of it. And then guess what? Whenever you put your hand over that cabinet, just like brand new. If you don't do that, that laminate will come through. And you'll, you'll, you'll see the wood grain, and you can feel it. Because basically, what did you just do? You just took all that dead skin off the machine, and you've got, you know, like when your, your skin gets dry, guess what, it's like, oh, a little itch here. It's like the same thing with a cabinet. That takes care of that. It's a nice new surface to work on. So here's a machine that completely sanded it down. Um, once you get all the paint off, you can go ahead and use the uh, the 220 again, just on the very wood. And what that does is that gets that smooth too. What your base trend is is to get this back to factory condition. So, do I have any questions? Any input in there? Yes. How long does it take you to pull out of this box? Um, that varies because sometimes I'll get a machine and like the first one we saw where the bottom was falling out, that probably take about, about three or four more days. So basically, you've got to take it apart and you don't know if that happened the other day, two years ago, ten years ago. So you need to let that dry, we're going to let that, uh, that wood that's underneath uh, air out, 
and then you've got to start building up your surfaces on her and find out if you know if I'm going to have a straight surface on her. I need to put some bondo in there. Uh, do I need to build it with wood like this one? Kills again. So um, if it's in pretty bad shape on the bottom, for about two weeks. If I get a cabinet in pretty good shape that doesn't have any water damage, for about a week. I mean, I do this on the side. So when I get home, you know, I'll probably put in like three or four more on always working on the machine. And I usually do about two at a time because uh, one, you're just, you're constantly working and you want to keep going on both of them. Plus also you're saving uh, money on your you know, mixing paint and stuff like that. You know, you just want to do one machine and then tomorrow we'll do another machine. Because every time you mix the paint up and stuff, you're losing a little bit putting it back in the can. So you want to, uh, I, I tried to do two machines at one time. So, so estimated is about a week to two weeks on each machine. Um, because uh, for every, uh, like what I'll do is, you know, when I first get the machine, first thing I do is break it down. Take the emoting off, take all the parts off, set them to the side. Uh, take the back handles off. Uh, do I need to make a back door for it? Uh, Got to take the coin door off. Uh, this Pac-Man, you have the coin box in there, you gotta take that out also. Front bolts in there, there's four bolts, you gotta take those out. So you have a nice smooth surface to work on. Uh, take these brackets off here. So basically, now you have an empty shell to work with, all your parts are set aside. That's gonna be for, you know, that's gonna be for when the cabinet's almost done, you're gonna start working on those parts. Um, and what I try to do is I try to build the, the back door, try to cover the monitor if it has a monitor, or any uh, the board, I try to take the board out, I don't want that getting all nasty and dusty or whatever. Um, but I like to put the back door on her, it has a monitor, I cover the monitor, um, that eliminates a lot of the dust getting into the cabinet. Um, so then what I'll do is I'll sand it down, evaluate it, see what kind of water damage it has. Um, then I'll start, uh, after I sand it down, then you get a, a sprayer. Uh, blow that thing, because when you start spray painting, you don't want all that dust to come back on the outside of that cabinet. Then guess what? You got more work to do again after sanding that cabinet down nice and smooth. Uh, you figure each, each color, uh, like with the Pac-Man's yellow, um, that's about two days for the, the yellow. Um, then you've got the individual colors. Pac-Man's got the blue and the red. That's another two days. Then you've got the black, which is an ink. That's another day. And then you've got a clear coat after that, which I use this stuff here. It comes in clear, semi-gloss, and uh, high gloss. This stuff is real good. I, and I have to use this on I miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man canvas because I use that ink and it's water soluble. What's good about that is if I make a mistake with the ink, I get a wet rag and wipe it right off and start over again. Uh, and, but the only bad thing is, is if it gets wet, it smears like mascara. So you got to put a clear coat on it. And I, I kind of went with the, uh, the semi-gloss. I didn't want to, the machine, you know, have a big glare on it. You know, and I didn't want to go with a just a clear coat, uh, just a clear coat because it kind of looks a little dull. So I went right in between. And then probably about uh, one day to do the parts, the coin door, uh, you know, sanding them down, taping them off, and using this. This is great for uh, any metal parts, but also inside here. You know, I'm like, and, and that cuts down your time because it's, it's a dual primer and a paint. And Hard to believe, but the inside here, people don't notice it, but whenever you're playing, it's like, oh, there's a name carved in the side. You don't, you know, you don't know that. So, um, I try to use a, uh, I try to use a, uh, a, like a, a 220 in there, because I really don't want to take the paint out of here and get back down to bare wood since I'm using a full primer, but um, well, I kind of want some of the paint on here. Uh, and then you figure, you gotta let the parts dry for about a day, another day to put the machine back together. So it just depends on 
first what kind of condition the machine is in. That's what's going to determine how long it takes to do it. Do you primarily just work with these cabinets? I've been, uh, for the past year, I've been doing Pac Man and this Pac Man cabinets. This gallery has been one of my first ones. Uh, but um, I had to, uh, somebody gave me a project to do. He says, I need, I've got some Pac Man cabinets and this Pac Man cabinets. Can you do the designs for them? I said, sure, I can do the designs. Well, guess what? I had to go, I went forward with the design, but then I had to go back because it's like, oh, I gotta do woodwork. Because you have to have a smooth surface to do that. And it works either if you're going to put the vinyl sheeting design on there, or if you're gonna paint it. Because basically, cabinets is like a canvas. You know, you want it to look nice. You know. It, you know, you're standing there and you can see the divots in it or you know any kind of cracks or, or, or things so uh, answer your question yeah this is the only design i've worked with so far i mean um, i've got uh, a couple pinball machines that uh, same kind of setup they're, they've got the paint design on it instead of the, the vinyl sheet um, one's an f14 one side looks good the other side of the paint is you know like this you know where the paint I mean, the, the laminate is good on it, but unfortunately the paint is like it. So I'm thinking it was probably in the sun, um, something caused the paint to crack, heat up, or whatever. So that's, um, look at using my technique to start working on some pinball machines. And what I've told you guys today can basically transfer over to pinball machines too, because we're talking about the same materials, particle board, plywood. Any other questions? Nope. You're doing that uh, 220, that pile sand, and you, the uh, hand sand, and you use a sanding block too, huh? No. You, you don't? Yep. Nope. You use your fingers? Uh, no, the 220 is. Uh, or you just put it on the machine. <coughs> oh, are you talking about the water? Yeah, yeah. This here? Yeah. No, I use can. Okay. Um, I don't like to use, uh, especially since it's a real. Um, Real yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to use a block on her because then you, you might you know, might pull, rip the paper, especially when you're dealing with water. And what I like is when I'm doing it, I also can fill with my hand under you know, the paper. Really? You know, see if there's any bumps or anything. I can, I can go, okay, there's a bump right there. Go back in there. Yeah. Because when I start doing the the other paint processes for the the this pack and the pack, the canvas got to be smooth. Because when I do the silk screen, when you pull that ink down across that screen. If I got a little bump on there, guess what? I got to all the way it never ruins it. You know, some places they, you know, some people advocate using blocks, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm kind of like you, if you do it with your hands. Yeah, I do the Mr. Miyagi, wax off, wax off, you know. know it's not going to be quite as even fresh right here. Well, um, I, I lay the machine on its side, and a good way, to, a good way to do it so you don't damage the machine is I get a two by four. And I put it on the side down here. So, um, you know, when you're working on the ground, it, you don't start tearing up on concrete or like that. It goes into that soft. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and I use a brace up in here so I don't get any kind of marks on the side. And then I'll go back, uh, you know, whatever color it is, I'll go back when I'm done and I'll touch up the top. And that way I don't mess up any parts on the side. And over the past year, it's been. One step forward, two steps back. It's like, oh, I messed that one up. I'll never do that again. So it's all—it's just been a learning process that um, I took upon myself um, because I hate to see a cabinet just sit outside. And I've seen a lot of it. It's like, well, then you know, when it's, when it's wet, you're looking at it. You can see imperfections you can't see. Right. 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 Any other questions? Do you have this written down? Like all the different things that you talked about. Um, like the sandpaper, this process, or whatever. No, I know. I, I didn't make a brochure. Of one. No, 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 no. It's not serious. No, um, I do have a sheet that, that I have out there that shows exactly what I do on the machine. Okay. You know what, what steps I take to um, fix the machine and get it back to normal. Um, I mean. Some people see this as a piece of trash. It's going to go out and sit behind a building somewhere, and then what happens is the rain gets on it and it just 
small as hell. I mean, I've seen some Gallican cabinets that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole because when it goes beyond the T molding here, you don't want to touch it. <clears throat> because you can fix, you can fix part of the pole, but it's a pain in the butt. It's never going to be one of those. You can get a wood hardener and try to fix it that way. Um, a lot of, a lot of, it's same thing with the galleries, the bottom is well on. It's like, what do I do with that? Um, yeah, you can sand it, and you can try to fix it. But when it starts swelling up the sides beyond the T holding, not going to mess with it. Okay, any other questions, comments? Yes? Any particular trick other than what you would think is common sense on putting the side art? On, you know, kind of going slow and rolling. Well, that's something we were talking about last time. Um, uh, the Tron I have out there. Right. I did that dry. And you really? know what? I will never do that dry again. <laughs> because it's like, leave me alone. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me until I finish it. Right. Because if I make a mistake, I mean, you guys know how much side art costs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not cheap. And guess what? Once it goes down, you just can't like, oh, I made a mistake. No. No, I, I would recommend uh, using the wet method, which you talked about, the soap and water. Um, just get yourself one of the little uh, spray bottles and uh, put a little uh, Dawn soap dish detergent in there. Um, I think you put like a couple drops per bottle. Okay. And what what you do on that is I get like a, uh, I just use my hand. I spray it on there and I just use my hand on there. And I went to the cabinet and some of the material, you, you have to take that back material off because mm -hmm. it'll get soggy. Okay. And, and like Tim said back there, just lay it on there, position it, start squeaking it. So do you start with maybe the top and just stick it down and then? Uh, I try to position. I try to position it first. Okay. You go from the middle. I go this way. Okay. Because once you st once you get it uh, once you get a position and you start in the middle, guess what? If the top is going to match, the bottom is going to match too. Right. Okay. If you start from the bottom, by the time you get to the top, it may have moved. Because it, because when you put that on there, it's slippery. It does jiggle around for a while. The only, the only thing that you have to be careful is uh, dry versus wet. Is you've got to really squeeze the crap out of it because you are going to get bubbles, and you've got to be real consistent. What do you use to squeegee it out? Just your hand? Uh, or a special device? Or? I've got one of those little ones they use for the windows. Okay. You know, for tinning. Right. You know, some little plastic one about them. I've seen people use a credit card. Okay. You know, it doesn't have sharp edges on it. Right. Credit card's good. No, or bank card, library card, or whatever. That'll work. Okay. Just uh, don't do it in the sunlight. You know, do it in your garage or whatever. Tell everybody to go away, lock the door. Don't bother me until I'm done. Um, have some paper towels. What, what it is when you start squeegeeing it out, you're going to get a lot of water that wants to run down the cabinet. Uh, another good point is, um, you know, especially on, the, <clears throat> especially on the sides here, you're going to get a little run over. Get ready to catch that. You know, one hand is squeegeeing it, get a towel on the other side. Okay. But but just just take your time with that. That's that's what the, the good methods with the, the soap and water is that you've got time. And then once that water is bubbled out, it, it's stuck there. Because when you do it dry, that glue is impossible. I mean, you ever take you ever take the, the side arc of Galaga? Mm. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I did I did the Tron out there, I actually uh, took all the side off of it, that took about a day. So if you make a mistake, you need to come up and start. So you don't want to make a mistake. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, that is all. That's my presentation on uh, saving history. <laughs>